I'm David Jenkins, the Forest Health Coordinator with the South Carolina Forestry Commission. A number of beetles attack southern pines, but not all are a threat, and those that are, are managed in very different ways. We're going to look at three of the beetles that attack southern pines. Black turpentine beetles will often infest healthy trees, largely limiting their attack to the lower six feet of the trunk. They also produce distinctive granular frass that accumulates at the base of the tree. If the infestation is light, that is you count fewer than 10 pitch tubes at the base of the trunk, the tree will likely be unaffected. Denser infestations may require action to save the tree, such as the application of systemic insecticides. Ips and graver beetles are the most common invaders of pines in South Carolina. We have four species in South Carolina, but they behave very similarly and their management is identical. Ips beetles typically attack stressed trees and outbreaks are common after drought and after wind damage. Ips damage is often the two or twenty dead trees that you see clustered in an otherwise healthy stand. The male of all Ips species initiates an attack by boring into the bark and constructing a nuptial cavity. The trees often produce pitch tubes in response to this initial attack, but pitch tubes are not always present, especially if the tree has experienced drought. One to five females will mate with the male and excavate egg galleries that lead from the nuptial chamber and run more or less parallel to the wood grain, that is, up and down. She deposits eggs along the sides of this gallery and her larvae feed on the bark, leaving tunnels that radiate out perpendicularly from the egg galleries, growing wider as the larva grows. These galleries are distinctive and can be used to identify an infestation by Ips for several months, even after the beetles have left the tree. One species, Ips avulsus, forms somewhat different galleries. The egg galleries still run parallel to the wood, but the larval tunnels are shorter and end in round cavities. This species can attack smaller limbs than the other species, and often will initiate attacks in branches at the top of the tree. Ips infestations appear simultaneously, that is, multiple trees show the same symptoms at the same time with little or no detectable differentiation in how advanced the symptoms are in different trees. The distinct boundaries of this infestation indicate that Ips and graver beetles are the main culprit. However, the fading trees in the lower left of this photo suggest that southern pine beetle may be moving in. Ips can continue to breed in down timber and logging debris. Operating logging equipment while an Ips infestation is active can damage the bark of healthy pines, allowing Ips beetles to spread to those trees. The best treatment for Ips is preventative management, on-time thinning and curtailing competition from hardwoods. It has been years since we have had a serious southern pine beetle outbreak in South Carolina, but a southern pine beetle outbreak can be extremely destructive. Fortunately, this beetle can be successfully managed if action is taken quickly. The southern pine beetle also tends to start its attacks in stressed pines, so preventative management is key. Once the southern pine beetle train starts rolling though, healthy trees can be attacked as well. The female southern pine beetle initiates attacks on pines, using pheromones to call other southern pine beetles to help her overwhelm the pine tree's defenses. These initial attacks result in pitch tubes identical to those formed in response to Ips. Once the female has mated, she excavates a serpentine egg gallery that can run in any direction. She lays her eggs along the sides of the gallery as she goes. When the larvae hatch, they excavate a circular feeding chamber adjacent to the egg gallery. These galleries are distinctive and can be used to distinguish southern pine beetle damage from Ips damage. Be aware that Ips and southern pine beetle can and often do occur in a single infestation. Unlike Ips and graver beetles, southern pine beetles initiate their attack in a stand and radiate out from that point into adjacent trees. This results in a distinct pattern of dead trees adjacent to a zone of trees with red needles which progresses to recently infested trees with yellow needles. This contrasts to Ips infestations where all of the trees appear to have been killed at once. 
In this photograph, the infestation is spreading in two directions. Unlike Ips, most southern pine beetle larvae do not survive when their host tree is cut down. So this is a good basic action to halt a southern pine beetle outbreak. Infested trees may look healthy. It is key to identify exactly where you need to cut. Infested trees should be laid down towards the initial attack site. Healthy trees should be cut down at least the distance of one tree height from the infestation, preferably two. Recently killed trees can be harvested and removed from the site to further reduce the spread. Sites can be assessed for the potential risk that southern pine beetle poses. This assessment takes into account the topography. Stands in wet lowlands are subject to root damage and stands on ridges may not have adequate access to water. Soil content. Soils with high clay content greater than 28% will allow more water to run off before soaking it into the ground. In dry conditions, roots will have a much harder time removing water from clay soils. Total basal area. Stands with a high basal area will be subject to competition from adjacent trees, making them more susceptible to southern pine beetle infestation. Also, southern pine beetles are more capable of focusing their attacks in overstock stands that have little air movement. Percent pine composition. Because hardwoods are not a host, the lower the pine composition, the less potential threat southern pine beetle poses. Furthermore, the species of pine can be important. Although all pines are susceptible to pine beetles, they vary in the intensity of infestation. For instance, southern pine beetle are able to produce many more offspring on a square foot of shortleaf pine bark than on a square foot of longleaf pine bark. Here is an example of the hazard rating system we use at the Forestry Commission. Pine component. Is the stand more than 50% shortleaf pine based on crews? Slope. Are slopes greater than 10%? You can use a clinometer to estimate slope. Clay content. Is clay content greater than 28%? You can use a field test or soil survey records. Based on your answers, Calculate the risk value and risk class. To determine the hazard value, estimate the basal area that is pine. A pine basal area of more than 120 is rated 3, or high hazard class. A pine basal area of 90 to 120 is rated 2, or moderate hazard class. A pine basal area of less than 90 is rated 1, or low hazard class. Adding the risk value and hazard value will give you the potential loss value and need for treatment. Potential loss values can range from two, meaning the need for treatment is extremely low, to six, meaning the need for treatment is extremely high. Successfully managing pine beetles begins with good forestry. Actively manage your forest to prevent overcrowding and weaken trees. Once beetles have taken hold, your response will depend on the beetle species involved. We hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please contact the Forest Health Division of the South Carolina Forestry Commission.